that the real and the best sustenance is from Allah. Allah is the giver of the sustenance. He is the giver of the sustenance. Everybody gets their risk from Allah. Everybody gets the risk from Allah. And that Allah who gives you and I risk, we cannot find time to make his ibadah. We make everything else primary. And we make our Rabb's command second. La ilaha illallah. We make whatever Allah commands second. And we make what our business partners or our bosses or our employees, our employees tell us private. Why? Because if I read namaz and I don't do this, I will lose my job. But Allah is giving this. Allah is giving this. We would leave our salah because of dunya. We would leave our ibadat because of dunya. And all this that we do is because of what? What? Dunya. And know that we don't. We know we just neglect it. We have started to be, like the people used to say before, don't care. We don't care. We say we care, but our actions do not show that. The pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, go and look just now, Habib Sharif was reading Kalam. By Huzur Sankari, Hussul Wat. Huzur Mufti Azam Hindra, the Arun Hussul Salapa puts us in this Mubarak man. Go and look at his life. Until the age of 92 years, never missed a salah. 92 years of life, never missed a salah. Leave alone faraid and wajibat, never left his salah. Until the age of 92 years. What? Why didn't they go and do more? Why didn't they run behind the dunya? Like we are doing today. What is the reason? Because they humbled themselves and they submitted themselves totally in the court of Allah. And when they submitted themselves totally in the court of Allah, then the dunya came behind them. The dunya came behind them. They didn't have to run behind the dunya. This is the problem. And it's a major problem. Where because of wealth and because of rosy, we are worried about compromising Allah's deen. We are compromising our ibadah. <coughs> we are compromising our lives as Muslims. A wise servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once said, <coughs> a wise servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Imam Faqih Abu Lais radiallahu anhu, quotes one pious servant of Allah, the wise servant of Allah said, a person who earns worldly things, worldly effects, a person who earns, Worldly things out of greed. He didn't earn it because he wants to help his family. He didn't earn because he wants to make things better for his home. He's earning because of greed. So, Fakir Abu Layt says that there was a wise man and this wise great personality said, a person who earns worldly things out of greed and holds back, and holds back due to doubt. Because he's holding it because he says, what if I leave it, I won't get more. <laughs> so he earns the dunya because of greed and he hoards because of doubt. Doubt in what? In his own. <coughs> if he had yakin and he had tawakkal, that wouldn't happen. So the personality says that that person who earns out of greed and hoards holds back because of doubt and spends only to gain name and fame. <laughs> And start spending people to spend so that people say he built this muscle. He gave that person food. So a person, the great scholars have said that that person who earns the dunya out of greed and holds back due to doubt and spends only to gain name and fame of the dunya, then they have said he is a munafik. What they said? He is a hypocrite. He is a hypocrite. And on the other hand, the pious personality says, a person who is cautious on every step which he takes to attain his wealth. A person who is cautious in every step that he takes towards earning his wealth. 
that ऐसा ना हो कि हराम is this thing what I'm being allowed? If I take this money, will it benefit me or harm me? So they are saying that person who is cautious with every step step that he takes to attain his earnings and while saving it for his family, he makes the shukr of Allah. He does say, but he does so making the shukr of Allah. And when the time comes, and when the time comes, he openly spends for the will of Allah in the way of Allah. Then they say that this is the sign of a true believer and a man with great foresight. Sign of a true believer and a man of great foresight. What does he know? He knows that that rub who gave, that rub can take. And that rub who takes is the same rub who gives. Allahu khair raziki. Allah is the provider. The best provision is from Allah. The best sustenance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today people don't care about where their earnings come from, but they want to do it. Everything is about dunya. We forget that Allah gives us risk. We leave everything for this dunya, but we forget this comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, how many people care about whether their earning is halal or haram? Let's be honest. How many really investigate? When it comes to investigating, then we investigate every other thing. But we don't investigate what comes for thee. We don't yeah. want to because then we may have some loss. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said that that person who earns his earnings through a haram manner, that person who earns his earnings through a haram manner, and then he spends it on sadaqah, and he may spend it on silar hami to take care of his relatives. He earns through haram, but then after that he spends on sadaqah. He spends on his family members, his relatives, he assists them. And he spends openly in the way of Allah. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa all will be said, all will be gathered and will be thrown into the denizens of hell. No. Doesn't matter, he gave sadaqah. No. Doesn't matter, he helped a poor person. Doesn't matter, he spent for the wayfarer of somebody in the way of Allah. It does not matter because the source of it was haram. Hmm. How many people think like that? We are forgetting. What we need to do and what is our responsibility? Look at the life of Sultan Ghazi. Look at the life of Sayyidina Imam Adam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala. Go and look at the Ashab al Sufa who sat in the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we go through some tests and some difficulty in our lives, it is because Allah wills it. You cannot get one lukma and one morsel more than what Allah has willed for you. You cannot. So why do you want to compromise your deen? Why do you want to compromise your iman? Why do you want to compromise your principles? You cannot win one person more towards you and you cannot chase one person away from you. You cannot get one uh, rand more or lose one rand less than what is meant for you. It is Allah's will. You make the effort. But it is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadrat Abdullah ibn Abbas, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, Sahabi Rasul. Hadrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu reported. He says something very beautifully. He says that the beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a man who wishes to become more powerful and energetic amongst the people, a person, you don't tell everyone's want power. You want to be, you want power, you want name, you want gain, you want power. Hadrat Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said that you don't do this. In other words, he explained that you don't do this by, 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 by compromising your ibadah, by compromising your time. Mm-hmm. Know that Allah is the rasaq. Allah is the rasaq. Hadrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if a person wants to be, to have that energy and the power and to be the strongest in his community, he should do one thing. He should have trust in Allah. He should have complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless him with everything. And Hadrat is Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood subhanallah. And you must remember this is not only in wealth, it is in everything. It is not only in wealth. You should remember everything is given from Allah. Risk, sustenance may look like just what you eat and drink. But sustenance is your ilm as well. Sustenance is everything. Because all is from Allah. Allah is changing. Allah is the, the sustainer. He's sustainer. And very beautiful rewind. I'm going to tell you two things and I'm going to 
Hazrat Sayyidina Ibn Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu He said, if the Ahl ilm protect their knowledge Why are we talking on the different level of this? He said, if the people of knowledge protect their knowledge And if they pass the light of this knowledge To the true seekers and the worthy recipients If they pass their knowledge to the true seekers To the true talib And to the true worthy recipients of knowledge Then what did the what 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 does Abdul, Sayyidina Abdullah Masood said? If a person, if a person of knowledge, if we, the, the, those of us that try to serve the deen as well, if we, with our knowledge, the people of knowledge, if they attain this knowledge and they try to spread the light of this knowledge, spread this knowledge to the worthy recipients and to those that are deserving, then what he says, he says, if they do this properly, if they do this correctly, then they will become the kings of the era. They will become the Padshahs of their Zaman. Look at Huzur Taju Sharia Radiya Allah. Look at Hadrat Sufi Sahib Radiya Allah. Look at all the great Oliya. Look at Khaja Gharibu Nawaz. Look at Sarkari Ghawse Fatah Radiya Allah. Whose course was in the last days. Hadrat Sayyidina Mahdoum Sarna Radiya Allah. Look at all these Muslims. Look at the pious servants of Allah. They became the kings of their Zaman. Because the light of their knowledge they spread to the world years. Subhanallah. They spread this to Jazab. But what Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood says, Allah Akbar, he says that they will become the kings of their era. He says, but it has become such. He says, but it has become such that the men of knowledge have started to pass the knowledge over to the people of the dunya. The men of knowledge have started to pass the knowledge on to the people of the dunya, meaning those who want worldly things. And they do it with the niyat of worldly gain. And they do it with the niyat of worldly gain so that they may earn the dunya through it and in turn they have started what has happened because of that because of that the people of knowledge do this what has happened the people who they now give that knowledge to are not deserving what happens they look down on those they look with haqqar so this is also part of understanding that everything is from Allah whether it is your food whether it is your your position whether whatever it is this I mean, this one time this narration I'm, I'm narrating to remind myself that even though we may be sharing knowledge with you, but it should be for the pleasure of Allah. It should be so that Allah and His beloved Rasul, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, be pleased. We have forgotten that our risk is coming from Allah. We have forgotten this. We have become negligent of it. And for for to to conclude today's discussion, and I'm going to give you an, an, an explanation that I think will sit in your heart, because it's sat in my heart. It will sit in your heart, and I think you will understand reality by it. Say the Allah Hazrat Imam Ahl Sunnah of the Allah one. It is the quote of Allah Hazrat the Great Imam, and the person narrating this is Malikul Ulama Allah Mu Taqruddin Bihari of the Allah. That a person once came to say the Allah Hazrat of the Allah. I want you to listen carefully. Look at people say, but you know how will I get my rosy? You make the effort. Allah is Raza. You make the effort. Allah is Raza. It's your job to get up in the morning and go and work. Not, yes, to say that Allah is Razak and my trust is in Allah and sit at home and don't do anything. That is not the worker. Yes, that is Hamakat. Yes, that is not the worker. That is foolishness. Okay? That is actually mocking, Allah forbid, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not do that. If you are able bodied and you can earn, go and earn. Whatever you do for the pleasure of Allah, do halal rosy, but earn. Don't sit in your house and let your wives go in. No. This is the condition today in many places. Don't misunderstand trust in Allah. The beloved Rasulullah told us, tie your camel. A person doesn't say, I have trust in Allah, and then he puts a million rand in the in, 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 hangs it on the, on the mirror of his windscreen in his car and parks it on West Street and goes for a walk <laughs> and says I have trust in Allah that is not trust that is foolishness <laughs> so, because you have been taught how to do so <laughs> so very briefly this person was, was sitting with Allah Hazrat Imam Ahl Sunnah and other great scholars and he said to Allah Hazrat Imam Ahl Sunnah there is one old saying there is a famous saying that on every grain, on every grain, there is a seed. You know the old people used to say, Dana Dana Pilikawa Khane Bhadra. The real saying is, Dana Dana Pilikawa. On every 
grain, there is a stamp, there is a seed. So he said, Allah Hazrat, you know, people always say this. Is there any reality to this? And Allah Hazrat Ali Mubarakat radiallahu said, not that there is a stamp or there is a name on every grain. He said, on every zarra on the grain. On every zarra, on every speck of the grain, there is a stamp of who it will pass to. And who it will get to. Deep the grain. Every zarra of that grain. It is written, Allah wills where it will go. In other words, there is a stamp which you cannot see. In other words, it is ordained. And then Allah says, let me explain this to you by giving you a narrative. He says in Bengal, the people in Bengal, the Bengali community are very famous for eating a lot of rice. They enjoy their rice, it's one of their staples. So he said there was a wealthy person in Bengal, and he was sitting with his family and he was eating rice. But he was enjoying it so much that he went a little bit out of control. And while eating, what happened was, somehow he sucked a grain. He sucked a grain, grain either through his nose or wherever, but it went into his dimaq. Ran up into his brain. When this happened, he tried sneezing, he tried coughing, they tried doing whatever they could. Because he could feel the irritation and the taklif that was being caused by that one grain. Tried everything, could not be released. Finally he went looking for doctor. Got to the doctor, asked them to do something, they tried everything, but that grain would not come down. Everything else that needed to come down would come down, but that grain would not come. He was in taklif, went from one doctor to another, went to the ENT or whoever, but that grain would not come down. Why? Because what Allah wills, nobody can stop. That grain would not come down. And it went on for years where that remained. And he would feel this burning of the cliff sensation. But it would stay, it would not come down. He became so immune and so used to it. Like you know when you have a ringing in your ear, you become so immune to it, sometimes you can't hear. Or if you, I remember when I was a kid and when we lived near the airport, people would come to visit us and they'd say, you don't hear the planes going past, say, what are plane going <laughs> Because you got so years, he used to hearing it. He got so used to hearing it. So he got so used to having that then, he kind of forgot about it every now and then he would feel discomfort. One day after many years, after many years, he went for Ziyarat Haramain Tajibain. Where he went to? Makkah and Medina Munawwara. And as he was entering the Haram, he sneezed. Many years down the line, he sneezed. And when he sneezed, by the will of Allah, Allah kept that grain protected in his demand. Allah kept that grain preserved. When he sneezed, that grain came out. The moment it hit the floor of the haram, a pigeon took it and flew. Subhanallah. That grain was the risk of that pigeon in my hand. Subhanallah. Allah Ta'ala, jab, when he hit the brain, he can keep one grain preserved for a pigeon. In Makkah Tul Mukarrama, why can't he keep our risk present for us? Understand? This is a very simple thing to understand. Allah Ta'ala has our risk preserved, it is kept already. Who will eat what? When you will get it, it is the will of Allah. That pigeon was going to get that grain many years back. But it was at that time the risk of that man. It was the risk of that man. But it became preserved for something else. So understand. Wallahu khayru razikin. Allah is razak. Allah is the provider. The quicker we understand, the more barakat you have. The quicker you understand, the more you will realize your responsibility in the court of Allah. Keep these things in our mind. And then we will understand how the awliya of Allah and the buyer servants of Allah live their lives. Then you will understand why they had so much of trust. And they understood these things. We are forgetting. We are negligent. We are heedless of this reality. Keep this in mind. And I think it's something that will sit in your heart in me. And when you go home, go and tell your families and children about these things. When you come to Juma, don't only keep it for yourself. Share this knowledge. Share the light of knowledge. Because the biggest miser is that person who has knowledge and does not share. The biggest bakhir is that person who has knowledge and does not share. However, when you share it, share it right. Don't add any masala. <laughs> Don't mind the same. Jaisa hai, samaj mein aajai to masala. Keep that in mind. Allah bless us with strength in Iman. Allah give us true love for him and his beloved Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who are ill, Allah grant them shifai kamit.
Sir, the Ajit, who is a Sayyid Muhammad's Khadir, has not been well for the last few days. He's feeling much better now. Uh, may Allah grant them Shifa al-Kam and Sayyid Ajit. All others that are in Allah grant them Shifa, those that have passed when Ahlul Sunnah, Allah exalt them in Jannah uh, Naeem. Last week, my father's cousin and one of our Muslims, his number is dad, passed away also. He smiled by Allah. Uh, Al-Kim Akhira Tharma, Jantul, Khudros, Nalam. How Abdul Majid Bhai also, he used to also help us always with his dad in the Niyaz, etc. And all the others that have passed from Allah, Allah, it's all the entire guys, those that are going through any difficulty. Allah Ta'ala grant them uh, ease. Uh, Dua Shafa for Khatun Muhammad, who is in high ICU in hospital. Allah Ta'ala grant her Shafa. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ease her Bimari and may she come out of ICU soon, inshallah, Razeem. And uh, the Muslims of Palestine, the Muslims of Kashmir, wherever they are going through difficulty, may Allah ease their difficulty. Allah keep us with Iman, let us keep us with Iman.